Hello everybody and welcome to Painting Armada. This is a new ship game. It's by Mantic. And this is the Basilean fleet that we've got here. These are some of the kind of your regular run-of-the-mill ships. Not giant things like the Dictator that's over there to the left. But these are your most common Basilean ships right here. Now this one obviously we did some object source lighting. I'll throw a link to the Twitch session in the description below because that's where we painted this one. And of course, well, guess what? Here's that Basilean Dictator. You can see just how large that is. Almost double the size, pretty darn close to that. These are all resin kits, by the way. Now we do have a second mast over here. So we'll be painting both of these guys up and we're gonna be using our oil paints. And yes, these are oil paints right here. Now, what I have done is just taken regular artist oil paints some are Gamlin, some are Williamsburg, some are Windsor Newton, and I just mixed them with some thinner and just a disposable plastic container. Put them in these guys with actually just some pieces of pewter to use as an agitator. We'll be discussing that as we go through this each step of the way. As far as the primer goes, we just brushed on some Badger Steiner was. You can use an airbrush if you want, that's fine. But for oil paints, as always, we're gonna recommend the Badger Steiner is. I think this is the light flesh here. Uh, you could mix it with this. You could mix white and the gray together. I think there's 24 Steiner Res colors. There might be more. Might be more like 30 of them by this point. So there's plenty of choices that you got. As far as this base goes right here, it is the MDF base that comes with it. However, I use this extra heavy well you don't necessarily worry about the gloss at this stage here because it's been primed over but all of these wave effects here that actually have some height to them and actually some shape that's done with the gloss so you can see there's some waves here we can get some paint on those and it just gives that little bit of extra besides just painting this thing blue it really didn't take very long and you can see it adds a lot now on this one here i did do a patreon video that has some water effects over the top of it. We took that gloss gel, mixed it with some contrast paint, kind of a turquoise color, and just did some additional sort of semi-translucent and then opaque uh, white water effects. Here's a couple of the ships here. So here's the rest of our Basilean pictures again, showing the Dictator and one of your smaller size ships. Again, kind of the garden variety. Went with a, an HMS Victory type of a color scheme on these but we've also done some empire of dust ships and i'm going to be doing some videos on those as well those are really fun i've also been doing some of the orc fleet and we're going to do some videos on those guys as well as far as the paint goes over here it's a relatively simple button hear the sound that sound right there that's the agitator that's bouncing around in here i just wanted you to see me put this out here so Boom, there you go. We get a bit of white there, but we're going to keep this pretty simple. You got this brilliant yellow pale, you have an Indian yellow, and you have this Terra Rosa Indian yellow. It is super translucent, but boy, it's a very potent color. Most oil paints tend to be translucent. Pretty much almost all the other colors that are out here, much more translucent. As so we go this way, we got indigo blue. We have this black spinel. Then we've got ourselves a little bit of Van Dyke brown over here. We have a thalo green. We have this perlene black, which is not black. It's a really dark green. Last but not least, we got S. Fultum here, which is a reddish brown. Then you got yourself a little Prussian blue. You can imagine the Prussian blue and the thalo green. Well, we're certainly going to be using that on our waves, aren't we? So not a whole bunch of colors here. It's pretty limited. We don't really need a whole bunch. We really don't need all that much. Now, as far as the thinner goes, we don't need very much of it. I use this Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner. Let's say you're overseas, you can't get that. Well, something like an AK Interactive, but I think even here, this enamel odorless thinner. This is from MIG Ammo. It's, it's pretty similar. I still think that this one is a little bit easier on your paints and such. They're, they're both pretty odorless, but get into some of our brush cleaner. This is from Windsor Newton. Nice thing is, look at this. It's also for dried acrylics. It's not hazardous and there's no vapors. Don't want to drink it, but it is. there's really nothing to fear from it. So this notion that you need all of this super toxic gallons of this, no. 
because uh, look at this here. This is days worth of thinner for me. That's a, that's a water bottle cap. That's all I need. We don't need very much. So again, just a little tiny bottle cap like that, a little bit of thinner. That's all you're going to need. Now, some of these, I didn't actually have time to mix more of the containers. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to drop a couple of shots like that. That's my thinner. Just put it in a little dropper bottle like this. Uh, usually I do that maybe an hour or so before I'm going to start painting. But since we're going to be starting off with our pre-glaze, and that's what we're going to be getting to next, we need a little bit thinner anyway. So that pre-glaze that we're talking about, what does that mean? It means that we are going to go here and we are going to be applying some, it's almost like a zenithal type of an effect because this is just flat primer, right? You can spray this with a zenithal priming, you know, different colors of primer, that's fantastic, but you're effectively just going to paint over it anyways. Here, this pre-glaze that you're going to see, we're actually going to be able to use this. I call it sort of an active zenithal. It's the same thing for these ships. Like on the sails here, I put some of the Van Dyke Brown, some of the S. Fulton and such on there, wiped some of it away. So when I took lighter colors and sort of almost dry brushed them on there, well, they mixed. And all of these sails were painted pretty darn fast. Same thing here. That was just pretty much an Indian yellow pre-glaze there. And on the deck, I think it was more of an S. Fulton, maybe a little Van Dyke Brown there as well. And... These two ships, I believe, well, the hulls are pretty darn close. We might uh, break out some of our either cadmium colors or maybe even our fluorescent colors to do these couple of windows to get the glowing effect in the windows because, you know, that's sort of fun. Not a bad idea. So we will be using, obviously, a couple of things as a color reference. And like I said, we are going to get to that pre-glaze. That's what we're going to do next. And we're also going to start utilizing some of our sponges here. And we'll get to that when we talk about our pre-glaze. Okay, so I hear you say, what in the world is a pre-glaze? What are you talking about? Basically, I had to give it a name. I had to call it something. Just like with the acrylics, we called our starting phase the shaded base coat. Well, this right here, I had to call it something. And it's, is it exactly a glaze? It's not necessarily precisely a glaze, but it's close enough. Close enough. I'm just going to make sure we've got our primer all dry here. And we've got that asphaltum we were talking about. We got that Van Dyke Brown we were talking about. Now, resin is a somewhat absorbent surface, definitely more absorbent than plastic or metal. Printing resin is even more absorbent than that. And of course, something like a piece of MDF, well, that's even more absorbent than that. Where we talk about pre-glaze, there's another thing too. And you have to get into this. It's the staining property. I, for lack of a better term, what that means is when we put this color on here and then we go to wipe it away, how much is left behind? And the more staining color is, guess what? The more is left behind. This is a mix, again, of asphaltum, a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown. And while this is all just going to look essentially black on screen, and it does pretty much to me in person as well, I know that that's a little bit more of a reddish brown. Now I'm going to go to the Van Dyke Brown. That's a bit more of a, it's a bit more neutral. Actually, not just a bit, it's a lot more neutral. Here I even threw a little bit of the black spinel in there. Now, this is not as watery as it used to be. That's probably why I called it the pre-glaze, because it used to be pretty watery back in the day. But it's just a little less. Everything evolves, and even things like the pre-glaze have evolved over the course of time. We're back into that asphaltum. I thought I would just show you the sail here. We'll, we'll just go nice and easy on this. There's another thing that can affect as far as how much of this color remains behind as simple as well how long do you leave it on the miniature before you wipe it away you leave it on there five ten minutes you're most likely going to get more of it left behind than if you just paint it and then immediately grab those makeup sponges and start to wipe stuff away now even as with those little thinners i put on there look at this see that little spatter right there 
That is why I always recommend having, well, anything of value, like, say, other painted miniatures, out of the blast radius. And that could be as simple as you just maybe set up a little cardboard shield. And that's not unique to oils, because my shade of base coat thing with the acrylics, the same thing would happen, because it's not all that different than this. The difference is that with the acrylics, it dries really fast. Here, this is not going to dry really fast. You say, well, what in the world is the point of, why don't you just paint uh, like acrylics with layers? Yeah, with acrylics, layers are fine, because you kind of have to paint that way. With the oils, you're almost better off having this as your palette. If we put this here, wipe some of it away, and then come back in with some of those lighter tones, we get what is tantamount to all this free blending. So all of these different colors that we're just kind of what looks like haphazardly placing on here, well, they're not going to be so haphazard. They're going to start mixing with the colors that we put on here. So instead of having to mix layers of color on the palette in acrylics and then paint them layer after layer, you throw this down, you wipe some of it away, and you start popping some lighter colors on there. And I've got a ton of other videos on the YouTube channel. Obviously, with the Patreon page, I have, well, hundreds more videos there. Not kidding, hundreds more. And you'll see both the acrylic shaded base coat and this at work. Now, lighter primer is going to be more advisable for this. If you use a really dark brown primer or black or something like that, well, your pre-glaze is not going to do very much. You're not going to get that zenithal type thing. You could sort of pre-zenithal it with your primer, but then why? You're, you're going to spend an extra time doing something that, well, this is going to do. I only say that because I learned it myself. It, you know, a lot of things that I... Maybe why, the reason why things have changed over the course of time, if you watch one of the much older videos, it's because, well, things were learned. New things were tried. New equipment, new materials, whatever was tried, and things were learned. And said, you know what? We're going to change that. Just like this right here, where that would have been far more liquid back in the day. Now, it's not like this is just straight out of the tube. But there's some sinner in this. I mean, you saw me drop some thinner on these piles. I am even put, I just put a little bit more on the brush right there. Sometimes you need to get the, the paint to flow a little bit more, especially over rough surfaces. And so sometimes you need a little bit more of the thinner, and that's no big deal. All right, back to our full tone once again. And you can tell, see by that spatter, that's, that's because we have a little thinner in there. That was straight out of the tube you wouldn't have you'd still have some maybe but probably i mean not that much now one of the other reason for the pre-glaze is in theory let's say you need to do a down and dirty fast paint job on this well you would have some not just some shading here but actually a little bit of color you throw those lighter colors over the top in what's tantamount to a dry brush fashion you might say wow you know what? Yeah, that's good enough. I got a whole stump, a whole bunch of stuff to paint. Uh, maybe later I go in and paint some more details, but you know what? For now, I just want to play. Not even sure if this is the kind of fleet that I want to be toting around. So that's another possibility, too. The fact that you could just, again, do the thing with the pre-glaze, put some lighter colors over the top of it, and say, you know what? For now, good enough. And yes, uh, just because the oil's dry, that doesn't mean that the, the fun is over either. You could definitely still do some more additional blending afterwards. I used to think, oh my god, well, the oil's are dry. What's the point now? And as I filmed multi-part series, especially the army painting series, well, that's when I learned, oh, you know what? It's not actually, it ain't over until you say it's over. That was a, a big surprise. I did not expect to to find that find that out where it's oh okay yeah all right it has dried. What you can do, you see, I'm doing the pre glaze here. Well, if this was all imagine this was all dried oil paints, but maybe it was lighter colors or whatever, it would almost be like a second pre glaze for lack of a better term. 
and people will say, well, what colors do you use for preglaze? This, that, and the other. Every single miniature is different. What I'm doing on this is most definitely not the same as the preglaze for this, which would also not be the same as the preglaze for this. And we'll just keep going down the line with things that had radically different preglazes. There was, uh, I think, some spirit hosts, even a Balrog, where instead of putting these dark colors on, it was almost white. That was the preglaze, darn near white. So it's always different. If you watch every single video here, you will see that pretty much every single one is different. It's constantly changing. Now here, I've got a little bit of the indigo, a little bit of the black spinel. And then we're going to wipe some of this away. And we, we, there's still more of our preglaze yet to go. But this is another thing that I learned, I, I guess I should say, the hard way. I, I don't want to really put it that way, but I learned that if I just do certain parts of the preglaze, maybe wipe that away, then dive into other parts, it's a little more efficient. So just a little food for thought right there. I try to say that as much as these are tutorials, they're tutorials that offer suggestions. I try not to get into rules. You must do this. You must do that. I try to offer some, shall we say, friendly advice where if you shovel the oil paint on this thing, well, days later, it might dry. For me, we're, now it's not going to be dry in an hour or even two or even three or four. But within 10, 12 hours, you can really, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be something that's dry enough to put, say, a sealer on, which, by the way, I just use Army Painter Anti-Shine. For all intents and purposes, the brushes, the well, even the cleaner, the, just about, I'm trying to think, outside of the paint itself and the thinner, the anti-shine is the same. Everything's the same. There's really not all that much difference between the two things. I know that that does come as a surprise to folks when I tell them that. But yeah, there's really not a huge difference between them. Outside of the fact that, well, you're going to have to use the thinner. And people will say, oh, gee, can you paint acrylics over oils? Well, sure. I've done it a bunch of times, dozens of times. I've even done a video just kind of showing that, where you can paint acrylics over oils and vice versa. I've had to do it when, say, there was a deadline change, and all of a sudden something that was supposed to be due 10 days from now is suddenly due tomorrow, or has to be in the mail tomorrow. And I said, hmm, uh, okay. Well, it's already been dried, fortunately, and then I just break out the acrylics and we finish it off, and it's, it's dry, it goes in the mail, done. So you, th you think you're maybe coming up to an event, a tournament or whatever. You maybe do some of these type of things with the oils. If you can't get it all done with the oils, as long as it's dry, guess what? You can paint the acrylics over the top. Now, makeup sponges. These are, I think they're called latex-free sponges. I didn't realize there was a difference in these. Shape looks pretty similar, but crumbly sponge, not crumbly sponge. You know those hard lessons that I tell you about? Yeah, this is one of those. I just didn't realize, you know, not being a makeup connoisseur, at least not lately, didn't realize there was as big of a difference. Now, what do we do with these? You saw that little container of chopped up sponges. Another hard lesson. I used to use these and just try and wipe it away like that. Well, first of all, I got paint all over the place. Second of all, it would take two seconds before the sponge was unusable. And it, this is kind of big and clumsy, especially on maybe a smaller object like this. So all I do is I just take a scissors here and I'll cut these. I never actually counted just how many strips I get out of this thing. Looks like we got three. I might just get ten out of this. Yeah, so I can get ten. Now those smaller ones, you say, what in the world can you do with those? Oh, believe me, when you've got little small areas to get into here, these smaller ones can be handier than you think. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our sponges here. Let's start with this one. You can see here, even this to my eye, it's less glossy than, than this one. Maybe not so much on the camera, but it is definitely less glossy. And watch what happens here. Look at that. See how some of that gets wiped away, but some of it remains behind. Now, depending on how much of this you do, you're going to wipe away more or less. Now, I also don't mind using the same sponge here because it's going to take off a little bit more with this, or a little bit less with the initial blast. Now, I could turn this over, use the other side, but it does mean that that paint's going to get on my hand. So, we'll just uh, guess what? We have a whole other clean sponge that we can utilize here. And yes, this is a wine cork here. I wish it was a cork for some rum, but we don't have any rum, sadly. And again, you see how some of that remains behind. As a rule of thumb, your earth tones like this, they're going to be less likely to be that staining color that we talk about. Now, you get something like yellow ochre, raw sienna, burnt sienna, those, you're just going to wipe them all away. They will just, boom, they're gone. They have no staining properties whatsoever. That's why I really don't use those. Things like the asphalta, that has a little bit. This Van Dyke Brown from Williamsburg has a little bit. Even the Van Dyke Brown from Gamblin. Now, the Williamsburg paints, I really love them. They're fantastic, but they are going to have a higher price tag. So these two paints here, and look, we have two colors that are on the palette, Asphaltum and Terra Rosa. Generally, these are going to be about the same price range. Now, this tube of, you can see Series 1 versus Series 3. So this one is more expensive than these guys here. Now, this one is probably about the same price as the Gam one. So this is Williamsburg. This is the priciest, but it is handmade oil colors. And... Not 100% of the time would is it the case where you, but you get what you pay for. But with the Williamsburg, very, very, very often, you, you get that value. So see, there's, look at, I'm going to get even a smaller sponge. Look at that. There's some people that might just say, oh, wait a second. Do I really need to do anything to that? And that is not unusual. There's been people that, that says, say, undead things or the Osiarchs or something that's a skeletal figure in nature. They'll look at it and they'll go, um, you had me at pre-glaze. I would have been good with that. I would have said, go. All done. Because look at that. That is really hard to do with just, say, an airbrush because, again, there's not... There's actual different colors in there. You can see that's a bit more of a bluish black. That's a more of a reddish brown. And look at this nice soft area in here. No need to mask anything. I hate masking stuff. I do have some airbrushing videos. And I think maybe I even had a video that talks about masking stuff. I really loathe it. And, well, this makes it so I don't have to deal with it. No masking. Just brush on the stupid primer and do my pre-glaze. And bam, look at this. I mean, what we're talking about 15 minutes here. And that's me taking time to cut up sponges. And, and we're doing some, some side quests as we're doing this here. And yet, in a matter of minutes, sales and all. Huh? Right? There's some folks that just would go, you know, I don't even know if I need to do the dry brush over the top. And you'll see what we mean by dry brush. That's going to be our next next chapter in the video here. I know some folks have said, oh, man, what happens if I put the pre-glaze on there and then it dries because I, I just can't get back to it again. Something happens, takes me away from the painting table. Actually, I've had that happen to me a couple times for various reasons and you know what it's really not that big a deal do you get the same sort of blending that you might that you're going to see when we do wet into wet here it will not be the same but ways around that and i'm uh, i think my army painting series 
kind of talk about that a little bit. All right. Next up, Indian yellow. And this is kind of a, this is a very odd color here. Now I'm just going to use, this is another craft brush right here. It just happens to be smaller than the one I just used. It's a synthetic, all the brushes you're going to see are synthetics here. This is such a crazy color. This this one pretty much breaks all the rules. It is super translucent. And normally super translucent colors like this have very little of that staining power that we talk about. In fact, this has so much staining power, I don't need I don't want to put too much of it on here. I literally there's no thinner in this. You can see we're just dry brushing it on. And yet it's pretty intense. It's fairly intense already. Look at that. And you see how it's kind of uh, mixing a little bit with some of the paint that's already on here? Ah. Look at this. It's like we're, it's shading by itself. I didn't have to mix anything. I'm, I'm just dry brushing on some Indian yellow. But yet, color changes happen in here. It's not just the Indian yellow. It's Indian yellow with some of the as full tum. I think always oh, an Imperial Fist Space Marine. Uh, maybe I'll try and bring that up later when we get into our uh, section where we're adding the lighter colors. But it, oh my, it makes painting Imperial Fist a snap. Like you practically snap your fingers and bam, Imperial Fist is done. Okay. You see how we're, look at this. You see that kind of scumbling the brush in there? Since this is a brush that costs pennies on the dollar, I don't mind just kind of shoving that brush onto the miniature like that. Uh, you know, a $17 sable brush, I'm thinking no. I think I'm not going to do that with one of those type of brushes, but with this, not such a big deal. All right. Almost ready to do the, our little trick of wiping some of that away. And look, we got smaller sponges for it. So look at how much of that stays by. Look at how it just, it's such a staining color. It's really incredible. So just one pass right there. All it takes. Get the stern over here. Uh, that leaves us now with our water. And we're just going to grab ourselves a, another one of these. It's a, again, a, just a craft brush. I think this is, a, again, from Hobby Lobby. It's 12 of them for $5. I might throw a little bit of thinner into this. Now, Prussian Blue and Thalo Green, those are going to be two of those colors which are really translucent which is kind of neat because we don't mind some translucent water effects it's it's water after all it is translucent again here doing a little bit more of the center just to make sure that that flows The Prussian blue. Now there's some Indian yellow there, so I'm going to get even more Prussian blue over here to kind of counteract the Indian yellow. And then we're going to hit some indigo around these outer edges because we want the, the ocean color to be a bit darker, a bit more opaque, I guess. Almost there. Indigo. Just a touch of the Prussian blue. See how much darker that is. There we go. And I can kind of see that. And a little on that side. And then maybe some over here too. Last but not least, we'll wipe some of this away. Now, Thalo Green and the Prussian Blue, those are two colors that also qualify as, as staining colors. 
most definitely. Thalo blue does as well. But to me, the Prussian blue does not just what Thalo blue does, does it better. I think it's actually less pricey. And it also does what another color uh, does better, and that's cerulean blue. So you kind of get a twofer. Well, you're actually getting about a fiver because cerulean blue is a really expensive color. It also does what cobalt blue does, and that is another expensive color. So you're kind of wiping out all these expensive colors from your palette, which that ain't such a bad thing. All right, pre-glaze in place. Again, some folks could say, yeah, you know, I'll just stick that sail on there and I'm, I'm all good. But we're not done. We're not. We're just getting we're just getting this underway, shall we say. This voyage is just beginning. Our next stage in our voyage, that's going to be adding some, some mid-tones and other light things to the sails and to the ship. Let's do that next. The pre-glaze is done. And now it's time to get those lighter colors on. And we talked about this whole dry brush deal. Well, here's some more of the craft brushes here. Now, these are just, again, the Royal Lang Nickel. They're flat brushes. I did sort of snip off the outsides of these to turn them into something that's called a filbert brush, which is something that works really well with oil paint. So, again, they're just, look at this Royal Lang Nickel here. There's about 30 of them in this. Yeah, there's 30 of them in this pack here. And basically all I do is and i think these are the flat ones here no nope, these aren't the flat ones here we go but all i have to do is literally just chop off a, uh, the kind of the corners of these guys and we've done this a bunch of times in our videos even on stream so see it's kind of got a sharp corner there all i'll do is just snip off those corners kind of round them out a little bit and it really works miracles but let's get to this whole dry brushing thing that we're talking about. And I'm also going to make sure I have a paper towel with me here because there's more to it than even just the application of it. I'm going to go back to the sail here. So you see we got this white color. I'm even going to grab a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale. And I can maybe hear that sound of that kind of grinding onto the palette there. We'll talk about that too in a bit. But there's just, even now, there's still too much color too much paint on that brush. See that? Uh, there we go. Now we're starting to get there. See how little there is on that brush? A little goes a really long way. Look at, you saw there was almost no paint on that brush, right? But it's having quite the effect here already. Look at this. Ah, but look at that. Now you know why we don't have that dry brush look because there's all, remember all that wet paint we put on there? Well, guess what? We're using that right now. But I'm going to have to come back. I'm going to have to grab some more of this. So all of a sudden, these white sails, not only do they have lots of nice shading on them, but they actually have a color to them with no glazing necessary, no no washes or anything like that. Kind of funny to say that. Well, you do the pre-glaze, you don't have to glaze. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the, 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 the gist of it is uh, understood. Ah, uh, look at that. It's just uh, so darn easy. Now, to keep this brush dry, let, let's say you want to clean the brush or whatever. Well, all I'm going to do is just take this here paper towel and just try and get as much out of that brush as I can. Is it going to get all the paint out of there? Certainly not. Definitely not. But if I use a much cleaner or even just the thinner, well, now that brush is going to be mighty wet. And we're not going to be able to do this with it because this is the important part. This is the key thing. So uh, that's what I mean about a dry brush. It's got to be pretty darn dry. Also, we put that paint on here, which was pretty thin. Then we wiped some of it away. Now we're just dry brushing paint over the top of it. Maybe that also will kind of provide a little hint as to why these things don't take days and days to dry. You, you just can't do this with acrylics. You can use all the drying retarder or, or medium or whatever the heck you got. I've, I've used it. it, it it's not going to do what this does. Because this stuff has been on here for practically a half an hour. And I could have left this on here for two hours and come back here and done the same exact thing I am right now. 
there is there is no medium in acrylics that's going to do that. The only medium in acrylics is going to do that is oils. That's your medium. And I know people, maybe they get a little, again, they get worried about toxic this, toxic that. Look, if, unless you're planning on eating the paints, nothing's going to happen to you. Now, if you have that habit of licking your brush, I would suggest maybe uh, taking a pause on that habit. Actually, I would suggest not doing it at all, period. doesn't matter if you're never using oils ever. So uh, there's other reasons, but yeah. Other than that, it's really not going to pose that much of a challenge to you. As far as, okay, get this stuff on my hand. I could take a paper towel and wipe it off with that brush cleaner. Or, if I want to save on brush cleaner, dishwashing soap. I just used it. That's why there was no paint on my hands. My hands were covered in paint. A little dishwashing soap, some warm water, all gone. It gets out the grease, right? It cuts through oil. And we're talking about linseed oil, which, I mean, it's not, it's not exactly a cooking oil. But I know some... Some oil paints are actually walnut oil based or safflower oil based. So, and I'm, I don't know if walnut oil is used in cooking or not, but clearly, I mean, walnuts are edible. Don't know about linseeds, but uh, walnuts are most definitely edible. I like them. So, we're, we're doing a lot of review here. I know, say, well, talk about the ship, talk about the ship. Well, since there's an awful lot of folks that are probably new to the oils that are watching this, it's really important for you to know the, these are really basic things. And I know we're hitting you with them one after the other, boom, 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 in rapid succession. But if you catch me on the Twitch channel, well, you could ask me questions there. No problem. I, I try to answer questions on the YouTube channel as well when people send me a question. Like, hey, what's that thinner again that you use? And look at this. There's certainly more that we're going to do, certainly more we can do, but there will be some folks that say, wait a minute, that's all I need to do to paint a sail? I mean, look at the difference there are already. Yes. It doesn't have to be that difficult. As far as making the oils dry faster, my only suggestion to have your oils dry faster is to use acrylics. If you use a hair dryer, well, you'll, <laughs> you're going to melt the resin miniature for one thing. You're also, the most likely result, if anything is going to happen, is that the oil paint might crack or the primer might, but what, something bad's going to happen. Uh, if you need it to dry fast, use acrylics. Obviously, I plan these things out so that there's, if I need, if something absolutely has to be dry by a certain day, I'll say, well, okay, it's it's within three days. We have to have that thing completed. To an, well, I guess especially if I want to do the, the brush-on anti-shine. If I don't need to worry about that, then two days is probably, I could cut it that close. But if your deadline or whatever is less than two days, maybe just use the acrylics. And like I said, you could use acrylics over the top of the oils, and you can use oils over the top of the acrylics. You just want, obviously, both to be dry. You're not going to use them both at the same time. That's not going to end well for you for many obvious reasons. But man, look at how easy this is. And it's just, it. so much paint is on that brush, it barely, it's barely making a mark on my skin. But it's certainly having an effect on the ship, isn't it? It definitely is. So let, let's say you're doing more of a speed paint thing on this. Well, I would, all I would do is just basically take this, it's pretty much just white because of all the colors that we added before it's it's like it's taking this white and making it into other colors that's why i didn't just take one color just a dark brown and just do it over the whole darn thing i i used to do that i used to do that in the early days because i just didn't really combination of i didn't really know 
also. It was more uh, historical base figures for, for bolt action, that sort of thing. And, well, you you can imagine a lot of earth tones, right? So it wasn't necessary to, to worry about a preglaze, a very bright magenta. That, that was not on in the cards. But now with the figures that I'm doing that have some pretty intense coloration, now that is a thing. So it also, too, look at how easy I'm holding the brush. There's none of this, right? If I'm doing that, there's no, there's not going to be any blending with that. You might even just end up taking off a lot of the paint. So <laughs> see, my hand is nowhere near that metal part of the brush, and it's just a real gentle, real gentle stroke right here. I mean, look at this. It's nice and easy. And for all intents and purposes, I'm just taking one color and just very gently dry brushing that over the top. So it's taking advantage. This is what I mean about an active Xenothal. We can use this. If all I had done was done the Xenothal priming, this is not going to have very much effect at all. Now I'm going to grab this I call my micro filbert. So it's just this, the same brush, just smaller. And we'll do the same thing just in a more confined space here. But I mean, look at how it, it blends with the color that's there nice and easy. And you say, well, I'm seeing brush strokes there. Well, don't worry about that. We actually have something kind of called the brush stroke management phase where you take a very soft brush that has no paint on it and not will it won't have any paint on it and you just you do this little bit of a uh, scumbling type of a thing and guess what it really fades out all of those nasty old brush strokes but look at this again a light brush stroke here a little more these stairs you're not going to see most of this because the sail is in the way. So that's why we're not going to get too crazy about this. So these gunnels here, they're going to be painted darker. We'll go back into that later. But for right now, what are we trying to do? We're trying to take best advantage of that pre-glaze. Look at this. A little bit more here with our lighter tone you can you can see that the difference that it makes there okay now at this point maybe i'll take my paper towel here and we'll try and get rid of as much of that as we can i want to take this brilliant yellow pail here and now we'll get some of this on the hull i can see there's a little bit of the prussian blue that worked its way onto the hull, not a big deal. Ah, uh, look at that. See how that kind of changes? And to darken this down, guess what? We'll do a similar type of a dry brush to darken that down. But look at that, just one old brush stroke and poof. It's so darn easy. You just, uh, I look back at past projects that I well had to do with acrylics because either wasn't using oils yet or whatever reason, and I just kind of go, wow, yeah, those are years of my life. I'm not getting back. Bam, there we are once again. Now we're going to get rid of some of the paint that's on here. Take this white over here. And now I'm going to start to work my way into the to my water here. And that is going to be mixing the whole time because oh, see what's on the end of the brush there? A whole bunch of that blue and the turquoise and everything else. And look at this, we expand it out sort of create some waves out here look at that it's just so easy bit more 
again of the white here and we let it mix that's the whole that's the key to all this is letting things mix and blend it can be a little daunting maybe when you're first starting out you're just not accustomed to it you say oh my gosh what's happening here you're used to all those uh, layers with the acrylics that we talked about well there's there's little practice things you can do you could just take a, a part of a ship you don't have to necessarily paint the entire thing you could just uh, paint some stuff on a sprue some leftover bits of something and just paint those get some practice feel more comfortable with it there's all these little color chart exercises that i do as part of the patreon page and basically i'll take a bunch of different red paints and i'll mix them with some of these lighter colors that you see up on top here and that way people can get a sense of wow okay that color is really kind of weak or oh my gosh that color is really powerful like this indian yellow and that's going to really stain like crazy so they get to actually really see it in action and again we'll see where just uh we don't want to wipe out all the dark colors that we have there but see we have this kind of a push of the lighter color that then goes away from the hull here Uh, more let's see little waves like so look at this nice and easy that is not too different from what i often would uh, do to create a marble effect and i have a bunch of videos on marble effects on the, just on the youtube channel we've also done a bunch of those on the twitch channel so i will i'll throw you some links in the description to some different things obviously to the twitch channel and such i've painted a bunch of armada ships there already and we'll be painting more uh, i'm still going to do a couple of more videos too of armada ships okay look at this just nice and easy right and it really looks like it's cutting through the water I want to get this even maybe a bit more solid a little less of the green a little more turquoise a little more blue Ooh, look at that nice rich blue color there now there are going to be some extra water effects over the top of this i'm, I'm just not going to get all that involved with what's going on here don't really have to because i'm going to use that that gloss gel that you saw earlier we're going to use that I'm going to mix it with things so you could mix it with inks as well but i usually just kind of mix it with a contrast paint which is well as you can imagine really strong and really translucent here let's get some of the lightest effects right here at the crest where the bow is going to be cutting through the waves here and that's good enough we'll leave the water for the most part as is with a little more churn here uh, this also doesn't have to be totally exactly white water here or foam because i it was kind of easier and more interesting to do that with the water effects as opposed to just the paint but here we're, we're just using the paint so i thought it could be good for you just to see that all right one thing i am going to do in between uh now and the the next little bit of this that you see is i'm just going to throw some black acrylic along the sides here part of it is just i need to see you know what is the actual really dark value here uh, especially since we're going to get into some of the black on the, the gunnels and other areas just a little bit distracting with this right now but if i just put oils on there my hands pretty much going to be wiping that away over and over again so a little bit of acrylic there that's why we've kind of been avoiding getting the oil paints on it because that was covered with oil paints and then i threw acrylics over the top of it 
yeah, you can guess what I'm going to say next, is it's pretty much just going to wipe off of there every single time I touch it. All right, boom. Enough said here. Yeah, we can do more later, but for right now, we're going to say good on the... Well, we just call these mid-tones because they're, they're not highlights. They're lighter colors. But now we're, we're going to kind of walk this back as far as lights and darks. We're going to actually add some more shadowy type things, maybe even now add some of the darker colors on the areas of our sails on the designs there. And some of these parts that we know are basically black. So why don't we get to that next? I mentioned some darker colors. We'll get into that now. We could we could use the black spinel for this. We could also use a combo of say the oh the Van Dyke brown and the indigo. Dark blue, dark brown, that's pretty much what black is going to be. And as I, I'm looking at this, I need a little bit of thinner there. This is another thing that we'll kind of get into is with the oil paint. A thick paint uh, sticks over thin and basically the other way around as well. So because a lot of the paint that we put on here already doesn't have so much of the thinner on it, this is going to be more likely to stick. This is one of those cotton brushes I was telling you about earlier, one of those synthetics. So again, a little bit of the thinner to help that flow. This is not like a pin line wash that, say, some of the vehicle painters might employ. But you can see now we've got a little separation right here. Like so. And I get a little bit more of the thinner just to make that flow a little easier. And I'm going to get this upside down here just so I can... Make sure, yeah, all of these areas are hit. Now, this actually does have a bit more thinner in it because I actually don't mind if that does a little bit of a pin line. And see how that just kind of flows in all of the nooks and crannies there? That's very much a vehicle painting type thing. And I've got a bunch of vehicle painting videos on the channel. i got some weathering painting videos on the channel, or weathering videos, sorry. And we also do that on the Twitch channel. So there's basically the Twitch channel. The reason I do those is it's a way for people to get not just introduced to it, uh, things like the oils and some of the other stuff, but it's also uh, a, a place where you can ask questions live. Whereas here, you can't ask a question, sadly. But you could watch this video and then catch me on the Twitch channel and say, hey, you know, I was watching your video on the Basilean ship. Could you just uh, elaborate on that one thing? All right, here we're going to go back to the indigo on some of these cannons here. There's actually a hefty amount of designs on there. So we're just touching the brush onto that. We're not going to get too crazy with this because the sails on these ships tend to be really close together. Where's my little example here? So you can see they're, they're pretty close together. It's really tough to see much of the deck unless you're really moving it around and specifically trying to see areas. So here, let's get, a, again, a little bit of our indigo. And that's another case of a bit more of a pin line wash. I mean, you could have made this thing bronze. You could have made it copper with the verdigris effects and such. Uh, I'm just kind of keeping this in tune with the theme for the fleet at this point. So say I, I came back in there after the fact and... Ooh, see... I need more thinner here. Ah, see how that just kind of, see how it just expanded in all those areas just by itself? I know it can be a little scary to maybe not have that exact control maybe that you're used to with the acrylics, but really that the oils letting them do their own thing is not a bad deal. All right, we got to do the sales now. 
like what we have here. So I'm going to leave that ship uh, near near to me here where I can actually grab that. So this has the indigo, some of the Van Dyke brown. This does not have a bunch of thinner in it. Not a bunch of thinner in this. And then we also have to do the, I think we're, yeah, we're making the circle more of a, a yellow type of a color. And I think we only have a couple of these designs to deal with here. And I always say this with the videos. If this is for me, if this is for my own armies, or if it's a commission thing or whatever, there's going to be time. I'll turn on all of my lights so I can see absolutely everything. And I will do some more detail type stuff after the video is over because there's a bunch of stuff I just can't see also too uh, I know there's some folks that say wow this is a really long video yeah if I also included the time where I'm doing the water effects and some of the extra little details that I paint on these things it would be that much longer of a video so that's why I just I try and cover as much as I can and keep this to about a, well, my typical tutorial videos are in the 100 to 120 minute range. The reason for that is, in all likelihood, your typical work session, especially if you don't do this for a living, that's probably the max amount of time you're going to get to spend in any one work session on your miniature painting. So I try to say, well, look, here is a what we can reasonably expect to get done in that two hours that you have to paint. May not be exactly, maybe you have many more hours, maybe you have less. But that is one reason why the videos are about the length that they are, because I try to maximize basically what you might be able to get done in that two-ish hour time frame. Again, just a couple of darker colors on there. Now, this will go back to almost something that's more like a dry brush in a way here. So where's one of my small little filbert brushes here? I'll just take this one. I'm going to get some of the paint out of that just with my paper towel here. Take some of the Van Dyke Brown. Let's fold some here. So I that the spar and the sail are pretty much almost the same value. That's going to make a difference. It's not, we haven't just wiped out all of the lighter color here. We've just darkened down kind of this lower half of the spar. And we'll do that here as well. And I'm going to do something real quick here. Something I really like to do, we call this on the channel, we call this film noir. I've actually filmed almost an entire video like this. So now there's no blue, there's no green, there's no yellow, there's no nothing. There's just the, just the values. So you can see we have some pretty strong lights and darks on that ship, don't we? But when you bring this back, see how there's more going on than just light and dark. You have this yellow versus the blue. And you have the this kind of semi-warm color here of the deck versus the higher uh, chroma type color of the sides of the ship there, of the hull. Just kind of very quickly, again, work some of these darker colors into the sails and the design. Uh, for me, I prefer to just be able to do my own freehand designs on things like whatever, sails, robes, shields, you name it. Uh, I understand why this was done because it makes it easier for folks that don't want to have to deal with such things. Now we're back to the Fultum. 
And some of the black is still on there too. The blue black is remember we took a little bit of the indigo and threw that on the brush. Now this is a little bit of the thinner in it because I could see there was a little bit of an edge here that the paint wasn't getting down in there. Now it does just by virtue again of having that little bit of thinner in there. You'll pretty much just have to learn by doing what constitutes a pin line wash exactly, how much thinner it's going to take or not take, because every paint is different. And by every paint, I mean Williamsburg could be a little bit different from, let's say, a Windsor Newton, or one color is definitely going to be different than another. It's not like acrylic paint where they're pretty much, uh, as far as consistency, really similar. That's not going to be the case for your oil paints. Also, we talked about it from the at the beginning where your oil paints the vast majority of those colors are going to be more translucent. Pretty much if it doesn't say cadmium or titanium in the name, it's not going to be opaque. There are a few, the Terra Rosa, and, and that one is an opaque, and things like the Williamsburg Van Dyke Brown, the Black Spinel, those are opaque colors, but those are rare. And the Black Spinel is also a color that costs more like what a cadmium color costs. As far as getting started with the oils, you can get starter sets, Gamlin, Williamsburg. I think a lot of folks say that the Gamlin starter set for its price cost might just be the best one. People say, what are the oil colors you got to have? Well, when you look at what's on the palette here, these are pretty much the, the ones. That the indigo the Van Dyke Brown, all these things that you're seeing me using over and over again here, well, guess what? Those are probably going to be the ones you're going to want. Now, there's other things like reds and, and the purples and such, but I've got a ton of videos about those. I, again, the Twitch channel, too, is another. It's like a YouTube channel because all of the past sessions are saved like highlights. So, yeah, you get things like the chat and everything, and I'm again, I'm answering questions, so maybe those aren't the worst videos to watch because people are actually asking me about the palette which is really simple here is just parchment paper just parchment paper uh, temporarily glued to a piece of cardboard you can even see a little bit of the glue stick residue because when i'm done peel that off and i throw it in the garbage and i'm done that's all you see here that's that there's no special wet palette or anything like that one of the reasons I used to use a much more non-absorbent surface. And then I realized that, no, nah, actually, I don't really want the non-absorbent surface. I'm working fast enough. This encourages to, uh, let's say, put less paint out on the palette, which means you don't have to worry about, oh, my gosh, well, what if I don't use it all and I'm not going to paint again for a week? Well, if you don't put a bunch out there, you don't have to worry because you're probably going to use most of it, if not all of it. If you have less paint out on that palette, the other plus to that is you're probably going to be putting less paint on the miniature. So it's uh, it's just a whole series of pluses, right? Okay. Now I said we got some almost like a more of an orangey red there. We need to get some of that. And that is going to be provided by that Terra Rosa that just has been waiting patiently over here. Maybe even a little bit of the S. Fultum. And uh, look at that. Look at that. See how that changes that ever so slightly? Look at that. Nice and soft. Maybe a bit. Oh, look at that. So it just is all mixing in there but not much paint on that brush is there. I know I say this over and over again, and I'm going to pretty much continue to say it over and over again. You want less paint on that brush. Just It's going to be all 
positives that happen as opposed to the uh, you you get too much paint on there okay aside from it taking really long to dry it's going to be just that much harder to put your next subsequent layers on there anyways and it, why do you want that you don't want it to be difficult we we want things to be easy and again that really added a lot to the hull without adding a whole lot of fuss and a whole lot of extra time now i will i'm gonna see if i can't grab myself a smaller brush here and we'll take some of our i got the fair amount of thinner in this and i'm gonna see if i can maybe bring out just a couple of these boards those are some seriously thick planks right there I know there's a bunch of folks that say holy smokes man there's that does not stick for me well this is going to stick for me because the paint that's on there is relatively dry now you know this brush has a decent amount of thinner on it but because the paint that's on the miniature does not have a lot of thinner it sticks relatively well but you notice uh, I just kind of do a little bit of a brush stroke and then we have to kind of stop. We have to come back here. We got to get ourselves some fresh paint. Also not going to do absolutely every single board here. Sometimes the suggestion of the boards is better than literally painting absolutely every single board. And we'll come back to the palette, get some stuff that's, well, a little bit fresher also. Has a little bit more of the liquid in it there. And we'll get some of the vertical surfaces of these boards. Now, I have not forgotten about our... Well, these areas here that we would love to have some kind of uh, light shining out of those. Which means, and I'm going to kind of focus on the outside of these right now. If the outsides of those are not dark, well, we're not really going to get a whole bunch of light. It's not going to look terribly light on the inside. Again, using this smaller brush. It's not that I don't use smaller brushes. I I just, we wait for the strategic time to actually utilize those. I think I'm just going to hit the rudder here with our dark brown. It's essentially just a little bit of a glaze right there. The same glaze that we're using to get the boards here. Turn you around this way, so we can get these guys. So, like, as you at any point in this whole process, you could have just said, "Okay, you know what? That's that's good enough. I don't really need to do. I don't need to do glowing windows here." So you say, "All right, you, you could just paint them dark. You could paint them blue." Uh, kind of a, like a, almost like a grayish sky blue color or something along those lines and just make it look like the sea or the sun or whatever is just reflecting off of the windows instead of having them be glowing. It just it seemed to be an interesting effect to kind of carry over what was done with the larger uh, dictatorship there. Okay. So poof, there we go. Uh, maybe uh, I'm looking at the cannons there. I think we're relatively good on the cannons. These are almost more like the, I think parrots were these smaller cannons that they would refer to that you would see 
on things like the stern and the bow. Smaller, easier to handle. They would just be kind of on a little bit of a swivel, almost like a like a telescope or something. And we'll say that is good enough for our darker color. So now we'll come back in with some lighter things, uh, the windows, different sort of highlights, maybe on, on this surface out here. So, and of course we got to get our yellow on the design there. And then we'll have to lighten up the designs on our sails and get some more white there. So it's kind of all about adding some lighter colors and we're going to do that next. So I did throw a couple little cadmium type things out on the palette. I put this cadmium yellow deep out there and there was also a little bit of cadmium yellow or cadmium scarlet here. So sort of a yellow and an orange. That's right over here out on the palette. And what we'll do is we'll get those two mixed together again. Create kind of an orange here. And we're going to fill in our windows. You notice I kind of just do one brush stroke there, come back, get some more. Because if I do a lot of this, all it's going to do is mix. I mean, that's what the oils do really well. Well, we don't necessarily need those to mix here. And consider this sort of the darker part of our windows, too. We're going to make these definitely lighter. Adding those, let's get these guys on the side over here. And yeah, that really picked up a ton of the black there. Got a little bit uh, greedy as we were putting that on. Now, these guys here, it's a little tough to reach. I mean, the sail's in the way. I don't even know if you can, I guess you can see some of this so we're not going to get I get too involved in this because you can't really see it too well and the sail and the mast really do get in the way of that but we also need this on our sails don't we so that's a little too orange there I'm going to come back over here where's my Indian yellow there it is Again, I don't want that to be too much of an orange now. I think we have more of the yellow that we're looking for. And I just do this on the sails. But you can see how that's a mix. Look at, see that darker color that's on the brush? Well, that's just fine because we talk about that free blending, the free shading. Well, that's that's part of it right there. So instead of me having to go in there and physically glaze that, make it darker, whatever, it's just it's done it all by itself. I didn't have to work at that, which that's really handy. And we'll do some more again here. Your lighter colors, when we take the, the white and, and such to this, it really is dramatic because all well, titanium white is really opaque and the brilliant yellow pale also very opaque. Whereas, say, with the acrylics, you put white over something or yellow, you might have to do several layers to really see it. That is not going to be the case with the oils. It's going to be very different with the oil paints. For the most part, those lighter colors, those are going to be opaque. I mean, even this, you know, this is yellow, a yellowish orange, and I'm intentionally letting it blend with the colors that are there. I could have had this go on there so that it was just really, 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 really light and very, very opaque. We didn't, didn't need that. Okay, I just want to make sure we get our, okay, we have the windows there. We're going to go with a a different route here and we're going to start to add some lighter tones to our sails we we're talking about that and maybe even some texture 
it's almost like a little bit of a stippling type of a brush stroke here. But after a while, you can see the darker colors mixing in on the brush. So I got to come back over here, get some fresh paint. Yeah, look at that. Huh? <laughs> that pretty much just covered it and it went to white. But as we, with each and every brush stroke, as it picks up the paint that's already there, you can see it gets darker and darker and darker. And we will get into that blending brush that we talked about, because that's going to take some of this texture and sort of knock that down a little bit. But that's, that's really some intense bright uh, highlight color there. So uh, when people asked about well, what color would I use for the white sails, well, pretty much the same color I would use for a brown sail, except, well, now we're getting a little bit lighter with the highlights, aren't we? Again, doing this a little bit of a stippling exercise here. The other thing that I suggest always, 100% of the time, is work on multiple figures. I mean, I do it with the acrylics anyway. Now, part of it is, again, it's what we do for a living, so more of an assembly line kind of a thing, right? Got lots of projects going on. But as fast as the oils are, sometimes you need to slow yourself down. You need to slow that roll a little bit. And if you have maybe two or three ships that you're working on, you're less likely to rush right in there and put the next color on. You'd be amazed at what just leaving the paint on there for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes can do. And remember, the last time we fooled around with these sails was probably a good you know, hour or so ago, maybe 45 minutes ago. Uh, it's kind of sometimes hard to tell what the real-time difference is versus just camera time. Okay, so yeah, I, I always suggest multiple figures at the same time. Even when I film my army painting series, I am working on multiple figures at the same time because, well, it's a unit. Here, let's get some of our lighter tones in here. This is not quite so important. Part of it is you've got the other sail, the whole other mast with its sails, and that's going to get in the way of this. And, well, maybe not as much light should reach this as the leading edge of the sail. So again, kind of giving a little bit of a stippling effect there. You can really see what the lighter tone can do. And I get for folks that are, are new, haven't really seen these before, before the closing credits, I, I usually have couple of images, finished images of the figure. I mean, they're not up there forever, but they're just up there for a little bit so you can get a, an idea of what the miniature looks like aside from just what you see on camera. Again, the top part of the sail, well, as you can imagine, that's going to just catch more of the light. Now we're going to set that aside. We're going to get over to this one. And then we'll come back to the other sail. And we'll do some of that blending brush thing that we were talking about. Not so much about blending the color, more about, remember we talked about brush stroke management. That's what we'll get into. Okay, more of our light here. Like so. And it doesn't have to be perfectly even or anything like that because it, it's a sail, right? It's canvas. It could be stained in some places. If you really want to go whole hog on this thing and do texture and such, that's, that's fine. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is scale. Because in terms of scale, you know, this... 
basically a person would be about the size of one of those rings there. So I'm not quite sure you want to show off every little stitch of this, so to speak. No pun intended. Because the, these are pretty massive as far as uh, size go. So, you know, it's one thing if it's the cloak on a 28 mil or 72 mil figure. But once you get into these really small model ship scales, basically, maybe that's not quite so you want to have as much of that. It, it's tempting, I'm sure. I do need to pop some light here under the tops of these rings. Let's get these guys too. Ah, see, I almost, uh, I was tempted to start throwing a whole bunch of lighter color in a place that didn't necessarily need to be light. So when I'm, I'm doing my videos, I typically wrap it up with sort of a final details, final thoughts type of a thing. So that'll be the next thing you see after this is where I just kind of maybe tackle a few things that I couldn't get to here and kind of maybe compare this to one of the other painted ships. There will be some differences because the, the paint is wet. It's going to have a little bit of a, well, it's going to have a wet paint look to it. It's wet paint. The Most of these colors that you see here, they are, they are colors that dry very flat. There are some oil paints that just have a tendency to dry more of a glossy, I think especially reds. For whatever reason, reds have a tendency to just be more glossy when they dry. I don't quite know why that is. I just know that it happens. And I don't think that really matters from one paint brand to the next either. It just kind of happens. And I, I can't cover everything about oils on just this one video here. I mean, we are also, again, trying to get this Mantic ship painted. This is the Armada Basilean fleet. But we're trying to, it, it's sort of an introduction to the oils, I'm sure, for for several of you. And I kind of want to get into the why as much as the how because believe it or not the why is typically more important than the how why use oils well if you see wow there's so many as far as the saturation color differences so many differences between the two the oil paints are just incredibly luminous the darks are darker the lights are lighter and the colors are just unbelievable with the oil paints whereas with the acrylics by comparison and i've essentially painted the same miniature and had them side by side and i went my goodness it the acrylic version looked like it had been out in the sun for a year and that was painted with some of the brightest, most intense acrylic paints that are out there. And it looked almost dingy compared to the oils. It, it looked like it had been faded. And no one was more surprised than me. I, I know that the oils are more durable. They will last far longer than acrylics. That's why buildings and houses always used to be painted with oil paints and even vehicles. You didn't have to repaint your house every two weeks when it was painted with oil paints. Our oils may be more expensive potentially at the start. Don't have to be actually, because you're only going to get 10, 12 colors, especially to start with. And you can always add from there. But again, you don't need a bazillion oil colors they're designed the whole point of oils is to let them mix together 
which means you don't need a bunch of them. So again, we're working in as much of our lighter tone as we can, especially on this gaff rig on the back, because there's there's nothing really to cast a shadow on it here. It's kind of open. Now, like I said, there's I will almost certainly come back to this and maybe put a few little details here and there, like I said, after the fact, well after the video is done, and I've maybe even worked on a couple of other ships, and I I realized, you know what, okay, I'm going to make a little change to this. Hey, that's there's no problem with that, right? Okay, now we wanted to get these with a little bit of shading on them here. See how we let that darker color sit on there for just a little while. And now, like our sails, oh, we can go back into this and maybe start to lighten that up just a little bit. I don't want to lighten up too much because all of a sudden it's, well, not going to be terribly dark, is it? And we also wanna we wanted to get to that to the blending brush too. And all the blending brush is is just a softer brush. Now most likely a brush you don't really care about. And it's got no paint on it. And that's what we'll use to soften some of our brush strokes here. Ah, here we go. This way, again, with some of our lighter tone, not too much. And there. Okay, blending brush. So this is just a it's kind of a softer brush, but there's no good tip on it, right? It's useless for anything else. However, it's good for this. And the brush stroke that we're going to be using is almost kind of a swirling brush stroke like this. See how we're kind of a, it's almost kind of rotating around here. And see how we're just kind of stippling this onto the surface. But as I can sense that paint is starting to accumulate on that brush, I'm going to take some of that paint away and just look in where I, I can see very clearly what just looks like a brush stroke, but doesn't look like any kind of a canvas texture. It just looks like a brush stroke or where there's some more of a hard, hard line. So see that? We're just softening up all of these shapes. Okay. Get to the back of our sails here. Ah, see, <laughs> I forgot to wipe away some of the excess paint, and all of a sudden I went, ooh, that got really dark right there. So what it's basically doing is picking up the paint and sort of transferring it somewhere else, which is why every so often I just got to wipe that paint away. You could do that with a paper towel. You could wear a glove if you want. I typically don't wear a glove while I'm doing this because just has a weird effect on the camera doesn't seem to like that it wreaks havoc with things like white balance and stuff so if you want to wear gloves while you're painting have at it i know a lot of painters that they wear gloves when they're working with acrylic paints you want to wear a glove you wear yourself a glove no big deal and as i said with the oils you don't have to unless you're going to ingested in some way that's really about the only way you're gonna have to worry about whatever is in it now if you have pets and such well I always recommend that you maybe while you're waiting for your figures to dry either maybe put a cardboard box over the top of them maybe with some holes in it or puts put in a cabinet or something like that more so for the pet here because while these things are drying, as I've found out the hard way, sometimes they are hair magnets. 
and they and uh, random stray hair and such will want to stick to them as they're drying. So that's really more the reason why I would suggest kind of getting it out of sight or just uh, not necessarily hidden, but away from areas where pet hair and other such things could kind of wander around and find their way onto it. Okay, and I'm just going to take some lighter tone here. I'm definitely going to thin this down here. Just thin it down. So I'm just using my thinner, that's all. And there's just, I'm going to lighten up a couple of things on the design here. I don't really want to highlight this too much because it's going to even more it's going to separate it from the sail that much more it's a it's a bit of a tough balance with this i would really prefer not to do that too much but where's my finished ship so you can get a sense of what we did there and that's sort of what we're doing now and then what I'll do is I'm going to come back in and we'll we'll lighten our, our yellow there. Probably we'll take some of the brilliant yellow pale and mix it with the Indian yellow. Because of, again, just how bright and intense that Indian yellow is. Now see over here, that line just got way too thick. But we have the advantage with the oils here. I can come back and just thin that line down a little bit. And now I'm going to, we talked about our brilliant yellow pale, some of our Indian yellow here. Boy, that makes a, a very intense opaque yellow. In some ways you could, I don't want to say you could skip on the cadmium yellow. Wow, see how that covers? But cadmium colors aren't the cheapest uh, colors in the world. So if you feel like maybe you want to not spend quite so much on a cadmium color, well, maybe the Indian yellow mixed with a white, that is that becomes your cadmium. Now, back to the blending brush here. So you could see I didn't, there was no layering of this, right? I basically put a very light yellow. So I pulled it off to the side. Look, we're going to do it again. This is where the oils are going to just save you so much time. See that? And it's also, it's softer, took less time, didn't have to deal with so much there. It's, and for someone like me who does this for a living, obviously time is, is very valuable. But hobby time is just as valuable for you. We talked about earlier the average work session maybe is two, three hours long tops, maybe less than that, maybe more like an hour and a half. If you also count, you maybe have to put everything away when you're done. Yeah, which one of us needs to take less time on a on a Basilean ship, especially one that's not the dictator? And I do believe that the dictator was painted on a stream that was about six hours long. Yeah, that big old ship start to finish, by the way. We're not talking about, you know, oh, I painted some of the sails. No, that whole thing went from, like, how you started this, we, how we began here. Yeah, that's what it started out as. In about, I don't know, six and a half hours or so, it was done. And I'm guessing that you don't really have infinite amount of time to spend on such things. This could be, and it could maybe be an answer for you. So as we, we get to a close here on this little segment, we'll we'll kind of do one of those final thoughts, final details, where we just we kind of maybe add a few little things here and there to finish this off and just kind of grab the other ship and we'll also stick this mast on there. That's the other thing I'm gonna do. Uh while you're not looking, I'm gonna get this mast stuck on there. There's just a little bit of a pin in there. And I think you can see there's a little bit of a hole drilled in there. 
So we'll just get this stuck on there because I might have to do a little bit of repairing of some things. And what we'll do is we'll get that stale stuck on there and we'll do our final thoughts next. We've got some final thoughts and some final, some final details here. So our, our two ships together, you can see we've got our sails pretty much in line. The, the deck, as much as you can see, pretty much in line. Again, they're two different ships. One has object source lighting, the other one does not. Why don't we get ourselves some more, a couple of more lights here on uh, these surfaces and just try and get ourselves a suggestion of some light just hitting the tops of this. We don't have to go crazy with it, just a little bit. Then we're also going to have to, uh, on some of our windows here, we'll have to get some of our lighter oranges there too. But this you can do as much or as little of this as you want. I wanted to keep this video as short as possible within reason. Because I know for some of you, it's probably the first time you've ever seen well, especially oil painting, but maybe you're not quite used to the long form videos like this. Ah, uh, there we go. Just get pick up a couple of lights over here. We can always come back with some more darks. But speaking of lights, see if we can put something that's a little bit lighter here at the bottom of our windows there and. Just make it look like there's light emanating from this. I'm kind of using the that stippling brush stroke, not all that different from what we used on the sails. But I have to constantly come back here and grab some fresh paint. All it is is Indian yellow, a little bit of the brilliant yellow pale. It's the same stuff that we used on the whole planks. In fact, we could even use a little smidge of that to lighten some edges of our whole planks. Because we can do that. And we can do that along the side here too. Uh, not, we're not going to, again, take the entire edge of this, but just a little bit here and there. Look at that. Tiny little bit that adds a little more dimension to it. It's been somewhat thinned out. It's nowhere near. Remember that pin line wash that we did earlier? It's not like that. Because otherwise, that's just going to go right down into that crevice there. And we don't want that. We want it to be on the top of that edge and not sink down inside that crevice there. Okay. Yeah. Nice and easy here. I'm just uh, looking at my sails here. You know, we could, we've got that perline black, which again is sort of a dark green. I'm going to take the brilliant yellow pale to this. And wood really is not brown. Uh, it tends to just turn gray, especially if it hasn't been treated or stained or whatever. So it's almost kind of a dry brush and a little bit of a greenish color over the greenish gray color over the top of that. It's really dark. Believe me, that it looks super light there. It is actually not very light at all. Remember, I talked in the, the last bit about the oils being that much more of a they're that much brighter. The darks are darker. Well, that is why. A color here that's not terribly light at all it looks like a really bright highlight because the oils are super efficient at making colors darker. That's why I actually really love using the oils for terrain too. 
absolutely love it. Again, looking for a couple of lights here on the starboard side. We got uh, some decent ones on the port side. I think uh, now that I see this here, I'm going to not just lighten that sail, but wow, and that's that's the pearly and black that was not really light at all. So see, look at that. Now that we know this area is pretty free and open, there's we should probably get some more light down here. Well, I can do that. And we're using that same sort of a stippling type of a brush stroke to maybe give it a hint of some kind of texture or at least just some kind of staining maybe. So this side definitely in shadow, but that side really should stay lighter. Here was uh just use this again as a blender brush. Just threw some of the lighter color on there and then we let it get smoothed out with the blending brush. It's quite the magical tool. It's such an easy way to get all that extra blending. Now, this is an, another little tricky thing here, and this is when it comes to doing things like these windows that have some, some lights on the inside. All right, this is our Van Dyke Brown here, and this will be a little tricky. Got to be careful, but once again, sort of a dry brush over the top of the edges here. I, mean, I would do this with acrylics too, but now the one plus side I suppose with the acrylics is all that stuff would be dry, so I wouldn't be having to worry about picking up some of that brighter yellow that's on the interior. But see how it sort of closes off the window frame now. Ah, see it was just, it was starting to grab a little bit of the lighter color there. You know, if you're going to do something maybe for the very first time in oils, I would suggest maybe a figure that has a big old cloak on it, lots of large surfaces, and maybe just use, well, heck, you could just use white and black or, or just maybe the indigo, a really dark color and one really light color. Instead of having to fight through every color of the rainbow and going, wow, these oils are act really weird. So instead maybe of fighting that kind of a battle, just maybe take a few colors and just use it it'll you'll kind of get an idea how to mix colors some other things you can do too and i i've done gosh at least seven of these type of videos for the patreon page where you take a color and then you mix it basically with the same five colors that you might use all the time i use these colors all the time and this showed me that Payne's gray is a very weak color because look at the white pretty much just takes it over right away. This color, that's one of the ones we we're using here. Uh, it's almost like the opposite. And also it will tell you if a color maybe is more translucent, if it's more of a, if it's got some shine to it, you know, if it's a little bit on the glossier side, you'll see that on those color charts before you ever get the stuff on a miniature. So a little food for thought there. Again, you don't have to do that. You know, the, there's some of these little orbs or whatever in their mouths. There's, I'm going to maybe uh, do something like this. I, I'm not quite sure if those are supposed to be. I don't think they're any kind of weapons or whatever, but I was tempted to maybe make those almost like a gold or something, but maybe we'll do this. A little bit of an homage to the Basilean thing, which is they tend to have a lot of blue-ish colors in the Basilean fleet there. It's also a way to get inject uh, just some other different color into this. And I could spend hours doing this. I could just say, ah, it's not worth it. There's five more of these ships to do. 
we won't bother with this. Maybe maybe I come back a uh, months later and say, you know, uh, you know, I have a little bit of time. Maybe now I'll go back and do some stuff on those those uh, those heads that were off the stern of the ship there, and maybe do a little bit more with those. You don't necessarily have to do everything all in one sitting. I know that people, they want to get everything just completed, right? They want to just done. They, they loathe the thought of coming back and maybe doing some extra stuff here and there. I'll lighten up that sail a little bit. And it was really easy to get this thing stuck in there. All I had to do was, again, just take a the, the pin, get it down in the hole, some glue, and that was it. That's all it took. The dictator was a little bit more complicated when it came to sails, I'll say that, because there was those four masts, and you will sometimes have to either take a hair dryer to bend some of the masts in, into shape, or you could use the hot water trick. I've, I've used them both. I sort of like the hair dryer thing better because just actually less chance of scalding yourself with the hot water. I'll just do a, almost a little bit of reflected blue light here, and that's uh, essentially the water casting that reflected blue light here. Now, in that case, that was just too much. Oh, look at this. We have a blending brush, and a lot of that is taken away. No problem. Uh, you know, fixing mistakes is there's mistakes. They're really easy to fix with the oils. I'm gonna try something here. A little bit of some some streaking, maybe. Just down the sides of the hull. It doesn't have to be super pronounced, but it might lend a sense of scale. I've got some cruel seas ship painting videos also on the YouTube channel. Gee whiz, maybe I'll try and link those. So I, I don't want the description to be too long and all filled with links, but I, I will usually have some links in the description for you at various things. But I think that is that's pretty much good enough right there. I think we're pretty solid. Yeah, let's go with this. So there's another one of our Basilean ships. And like I said, to go to the closing credits, that's where you're going to see the finished pictures of this guy. And thank you so much for watching this. I really appreciate that. And if you want to catch some of these being painted live on stream, it's just Wapelius on Twitch. And you can also see finished pictures of things. Wapelius on Instagram. It's uh, pretty much the same name just about everywhere. So thanks again for watching this, everybody. If you would, could do me a favor, maybe do the like thing. And if you want to subscribe, if you haven't subscribed, there's tons of stuff for you to watch, isn't there? So I'll catch you on the next video where we're painting some more of the Armada ships.